days before retirement. You remember that? Mm -hmm. yeah. Well, he did. He fired him right before he uh, retired so McCabe could lose part of his pension. Mm -hmm. There's also a report that John Kelly, General Kelly, fired Rex Tillerson when he was on the toilet. <laughs> yeah, so what, yeah, my question is, what is it with these yeah. mean boys? They always talk about g mean girls. These are very mean boys well, we're I, talking about here. I think the McCabe here. thing is, is uh, very important because, yes, he, he, you know, Jeff Sessions did this and, and I, I guess, uh, you know, almost ruined the pension of a 20-year government mm -hmm. employee, 20 plus years. But if you look at President Trump's tweets this weekend, it appears that he is, I guess, thinking that McCabe and Comey and Mueller are all part of this alleged this conspiracy witch hunt. witch hunt to get him. And I think we should be very concerned about that well, because McCabe does have some memos about President But McCabe also his interactions is accused. I mean, the, what's going on here, too, is that McCabe was accused of inappropriately leaking information to the Wall Street Journal regarding the Clinton Foundation. He says that Comey gave him clearance to do so, that uh -huh. the people underneath him could talk to journalists. Comey, under oath, said that he never sanctioned anyone giving any information to the press or leaking out. One of these two guys is lying. So when you're talking oh. about people guessing about what's going on in the FBI and in these investigations but one way or another someone lied under oath. See, I, this I don't agree looks... with that actually because if we don't really know why McCabe was fired because the IG's report hasn't been released. So well, there that's are, why there I'm surprised so by the action though. Because inappropriate we're not allowed sure. two officials to speak to reporters. We, we that's why he was fired. You're allowing your we people haven't to... seen it. Like it's it's kind of speculative but that being said if you look at what Comey said um, during his investigation, he said, I didn't leak anything, and I don't know anyone anonymously leaking anything. That is not necessarily a lie, because if he gave permission to his deputy... Then is it a leak? To, it's not necessarily a well, leak. Well, with so all I, of I this, there's also Stormy there's Daniels, so we'll be right back with more hot topics. <laughs> Good evening and welcome to Tucker Carlson tonight. As you may have heard, President Trump has fired former Deputy FBI Director Andrew McCabe. If you haven't heard, welcome back from New Zealand. This is the biggest news story in America. The president fired him on a recommendation from the FBI's career internal investigators. And despite all the attention this firing is getting, as a practical matter, it doesn't mean that much. McCabe was set to retire in days anyway. And contrary to news reports, he is not at risk of losing most of his enormous federal pension, much bigger than the pension you're not getting. But none of this has stopped the usual hysteria merchants from predicting the end of the republic. Some have accused the White House of obstructing justice. It's hard to see how that works exactly since McCabe was leaving anyway. Others have called the firing an assault on democracy, as if unelected career bureaucrats found guilty of misconduct by their own agencies were somehow the linchpin of representative government. Once again, how do all these dumb people get jobs on television? That's another show. But tonight, there are really only two questions that actually matter here. First, did Andrew McCabe do anything wrong? And two, if so, did it justify his firing? Well, according to the FBI's Office of Professional Responsibility, McCabe allowed FBI agents to disclose sensitive information to the press, leak. He then lied to federal investigators about what he did. That's what the investigation found. Now, if McCabe really did that, losing his pension ought to be the least of his worries because lying to the FBI is a felony. Try it and find out. Martha Stewart went to prison for that. Michael Flynn had his life destroyed over it. Mere mortals are not allowed to lie to the FBI. They wind up in handcuffs when they do. And of course, it's a far greater threat to all of us when FBI officials lie. The FBI is the most powerful law enforcement agency in the world. It has near absolute power over you, the power of life and death. Yet, weirdly, nobody on CNN seems bothered in the slightest by any of this. One of the FBI's top officials caught lying about an active investigation? Whatever. No big deal. Punishing him is the crime here. That's an odd response if you think about it. Would CNN panelists show concern if, I don't know, a local sheriff lied in order to frame teenagers for crimes he didn't commit? How about if your local police department fabricated evidence? Dishonest law enforcement is a big deal no matter who the president is. In fact, it's the biggest deal. It's the worst abuse of power. And yet, for some reason, our designated watchdogs, the very people who are supposed to be protecting us from this kind of third world nonsense, think it's totally fine as long as the net result is a bad news cycle for Trump. Watch. This kind of thing that we saw with respect to Andrew McCabe is the kind of thing you would expect 
Putin to do. My problem is the timing and the way it all worked. It just seemed mean-spirited. The point is to tear down the credibility of all people involved with anything pertaining to anything that might look into this president, which leads one to believe that this is authoritarian behavior. There are kids getting shot in our schools. There is an, uh, there's an epidemic of people dying from overdoses. And what is the president uh, minding? Uh, this little vindictive, small, let's get rid of McCabe and let's deny him uh, his pension. So whether you agree or not with the politics of the people you just saw, those are buffoonish points. Here's something that's not buffoonish, though. Over the weekend, the former head of the CIA, John Brennan, came completely unglued over McCabe's firing on Twitter, Twitter being the place where people like that now go to lose their minds. Here's the quote. When the full extent of your venality, moral turpitude, and political corruption becomes known, Brennan wrote to the president, you will take your rightful place as a disgraced demagogue in the dustbin of history fingers smoking as he typed it. But here's the interesting part. In response to Brennan's tweet, the one you just heard, former UN ambassador Samantha Power wrote this, quote, not a good idea to piss off John Brennan. Let that sink in. What the hell does that mean? The former head of the CIA is going to do what exactly in response? No wonder people are afraid of the deep state. This is what it looks like when it bears its fangs. Thwart us and we will destroy you. In case you're looking for a real threat to American democracy, and there are some, there you go. Alan Dershowitz is an emeritus professor at Harvard Law School, and he joins us tonight. Professor, it seems like there's only one of two options. Either the FBI internal investigators are corrupt and lying, or Andrew McCabe, the former deputy director, is corrupt or lying. Are there other options? And if so, which one of those is right? Well, there's a very simple way of finding out. Let McCabe waive his right of privacy and demand that the public see the Office of Investigation Report, the Office of Professional Responsibility Report, then we can decide for ourselves whether or not this was a corrupt investigation or whether or not, in right. fact, McCabe is guilty of what I have called test lying and Comey is guilty of test lying because, remember, their testimony today conflicts. McCabe basically says that he was authorized to make the leak by the head of the FBI. And the head of the FBI has said under oath that he has never authorized anybody to make a leak. So this whole issue of test lying, which was on the front page of the New York Times just yesterday, is front and center. When, when the guardians need to have guardians, when the people who are supposed to protect us are testifying, are testifying falsely for whatever reason, we the public have a right to know about that. Well, absolutely. And, and we want to live in a country where we can trust our most basic institutions like law enforcement mm -hmm. and the judiciary. So, but, but put this in context for us. Well, I guess what I'm, look, I don't know, I have not seen the report. And I'm, I'm taking it at face value and maybe I shouldn't. My real point, however, is that the allegation is a very serious one that the deputy director of the FBI might be lying about a current criminal investigation. Why are so many others dismissive of that like it's no big deal? Larry Tribe, your former colleague at Harvard, for example, why? Because everybody is so involved in this partisan conflict that anything that's done against Trump must be good according to the partisans on one side and anything done against Trump must be bad according to the partisans on the other side. Remember from day one I said, do not appoint a special counsel. Have a nonpartisan yeah. investigative commission like the Commission of 9-11 that has inc incredible trust and that doesn't have a partisan dog in this race. Uh, and they have to be the ones to make this decision. Right now, the FBI has lost its credibility. The CIA is losing its credibility. Congressional committees aren't trusted by uh, either side. It's not too late to convene a nonpartisan, congressionally authorized investigative commission to look into whether there was collusion, whether the Russians tried to interfere. Of course they did, but we need to have the evidence. And how to stop them from doing it again. That's what the American public is of interested course. in, not finger pointing by both sides. So let's just very quickly take Trump out of this. And if you could just send a message to your lifelong fellow liberals who care about civil liberties about the stakes here, what would it be like to live in a country where the chief law enforcement agency was actually corrupt? where its leaders were lying about investigations. Mm -hmm. How might that affect liberals down the road, would you say? 
Well, I have a message for both sides. You know, historically, it's been the liberals and the Democrats who haven't trusted the FBI, right. haven't trusted the Justice Department, and have said, let's make sure that we have oversight. And it's been the Republicans and the conservatives who said, oh, anything the FBI says has to be correct, it's has true. to be true, even J. Edgar Hoover. Now we've seen it all flip because partisanship has overcome principle. And my message to both Democrats and Republicans is get back to principle and stop this partisanship. The American public is interested and cares about the truth from a nonpartisan point of view. They're sick and tired of a Republican truth, a Democrat truth, a Trump truth, an anti-Trump truth. We need